Well, hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? I uh, just want to do some videos. Uh, me painting and stuff. Uh, welcome to my channel. It's jpaulsmith.art. Uh, and this is what I do. Um, this is my... This is one of the paintings I'm actually working on right now. Um, just getting into it. Uh, I don't know, I got a couple of days in this one already. Uh, it's gonna end up being a, a uh, pretty good sized painting of a, our actual, oh, our puppy that passed away. Um, this was by request, so. I'm obligating as such. But uh, now this is gonna go with uh, Carson, uh, stepson, this is gonna go with him to his dorm. And he's the, heading to uh, Clemson University here. I'm going to his orientation tomorrow, actually. But uh, yeah, just doing this and working on this art. People ask me questions all the time, like, you know, what do I use and different things like that. Um, I use all kinds of stuff. Uh, I do stuff that you're probably not supposed to do, but I don't really care because I don't like rules when it comes to art. You do what you want to do. Um, that's kind of always been my, my deal, and that's the way I was always taught by uh, my art teacher, uh, who was a huge influence on me when I was in high school, uh, Mr. Adams. Shout out. Very cool man. He's passed away. But... Uh, Nah, he was, he was cool, man. He, he always told me, he's like, just do what you want to do. He's like, art, you know, you're going to have people to have the art rules and this has to be this and composition and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I learned all that, but <sighs> I don't like it. <laughs> I'd rather just do my thing. I'd rather just do my own art. I mean, there's a lot of artists that have inspired me throughout my, my, my life. Uh, a lot of New Orleans artists inspire me very, very much. Uh, luckily, I've got to meet all of them and talk to them. Uh, some of them on multiple occasions have become friends with them. Um, dude right behind me right here, that painting right there, that's Terrence Osborne. It, the amazing artist from New Orleans. Uh, love him. Really good guy. Uh, got to meet him a few times. Really super duper dude. Uh, good dude. Uh, Michaelopoulos, man. I got a couple of his, uh, amazing artists, same kind of thing. Um, John Glam, he's right there in the French Quarter. Frenchy from the French Quarter. Uh, a lot of my influence comes, I think, from New Orleans and, and just from growing up in South Louisiana. Uh, at the same time, though, it's like, you know, I traveled a lot, so I got to see a lot of different and really, really good art, like classic art, like when I was in France and when I was in Spain. Uh, when I was in the military, I got to, uh, to travel a pretty good bit and got to go to Europe and Roach and all that stuff. And we, when we went everywhere, uh, pretty much you can imagine in Europe, we didn't miss too much, including the Middle East, of course, and all that kind of stuff too. But seeing beautiful things there too. And spent a lot of tours uh, in Mogadishu, Somalia, Li Monrovia, Liberia, um, I've been to Egypt, went just that, that African culture too, that has a lot to do, I, I, I love, I love the, um, the tribal art, folk art, mm, kind of almost like a street art kind of a deal, um, but just with my flair, that's what I like to do, it's basically, my art is basically the influences of all the visual things I've seen in my life. That's pretty much, and I think that's pretty much every artist, you know. Um, you get in, in the great part is just about to take that and just imagine whatever you want to do, and put it on canvas, and draw it or paint it or whatever, man. Do it on a computer, draw it in the sand. Who cares? Do something, create things. It, it, it's. I see all these people wandering around these days, just full of anxiety and just ah, oh, create something create something. Everything is being fed to you creatively, but you need to output create creativity. You have to be able to do that. 
And that's something that you need to be able to do as a human being. And, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're painting, if you're making music, if you're dancing, uh, culinary arts, man. If you're a freaking great freaking artist, dude, you can make masterpieces on a grill. Do that. Make that your art form. Do it that way. Everybody's good at stuff. Daisy's good at sleeping. <laughs> that's my dog down there. Uh, but yeah, that's what I say. Everybody's good at stuff. You can create anything you want to. The sky's the limit. There's no rules. There's no rules. That's the beautiful thing about art. There are no rules. You just you just do whatever you want to do. And it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter if people like it or it, whatever. Just do it, man. Just do it. It's so much fun. It's so it's such a good release. It's 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 meditation. You know, if you if whatever you do. Whatever that thing is, do it. Do it. Do it a lot. Get even better at it. You know, if there's something that you've never tried to do, do it. It's awesome. Go. You always wanted to whatever. Do it. There's no excuse. There's no reason why you can't. You know, um, that's one of the beautiful things I love about the times we're kind of living in right now, even though they're ridiculously crazy. And so... Tense and the world today is just so high strung and uh, uptight. That's that's probably my yeah. That's probably the, the the best way to explain it. And it's because we're not using that creative part of our brain. We're not embracing that. We're not doing things. And in my opinion, this is all my opinion, but we're not doing things that we can become singular thought patterned on and we can just focus on, on that one thing. And whatever that is, do it, man. If it's fishing, dude, if it's hunting, do, do it, go. Just unplug for a little while. <laughs> and I know I'm being hypercritical of you, son. I'm being a hypocrite because I'm sitting here doing a video for YouTube right now. But at the same time, I unplug. I sit here and I, I paint and I play music. I get to do those things. That's my that's my outlets. That's my release, you know. Um, and why are we talking about that, dude? Get together more. People hang out, dude. Barbecue. Have fun. Have parties, dude. Have get-togethers. Have people over. Have nights when people come over to dinners and stuff like that. That's we need to do that more. That's, 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 that's falling away because everybody got a freaking phone in their hand and they just sit there and talk to each other over little screens. Nah, man. You got to have people. You got to have the, the other folks' energy around you. You need those people around you. You need them to, to, to you feed off of that. You feed off of it. And, you, and also, you, and, and you can help you help somebody else at the same time. But, uh, but yeah. Well, I'm going to get off my little soapbox on that. But anyway... Um, yeah, this one right here I'm working on is this is for uh, this is gonna be over our puppy sugar bear. Uh, right now I'm just bringing in. I did. I, I literally talking about not not worrying about what uh what you're doing and the great part. That's one of the things I like about painting. I literally started this whole entire painting off. Uh, and I have, and yes, I have it sideways right now. So this is like the top. As you'd be looking at it, it'd be like the top uh, right hand corner. Um, but I literally had this whole top part right here was all. Um, a sunrise and I had ground and, and I had like water and kind of stuff down at the bottom of the painting and uh, I had a sun somewhere on this part and the, the rays came back this way and um, and basically whenever I was doing this in the middle of me doing it I was like no I don't want it to look that way so what did I do I went out and I done some wings for one of my for my little girl's um, her dance recital I made these big I don't remember how 16 foot wide <laughs> wings and uh, I put uh, paper plates as the actual feathers and then came back with that and I found these big huge bottles of freaking paint and uh, they're, I'm not kidding they're like freaking they're like three probably two and a half feet tall, three foot tall. And they shoot black gloss enamel, spray paint, and they have a tip on them that's about that big. And it's quite amazing. Um, 
it's pretty cool uh, because you can literally cover so much area. It's like spraying a car. So like when I was spraying those, that, that, those wings, I passed over those wings, I think five times or four or five times with the, with the spray can and they were painted. I mean, it's that, that much of an actual spray. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's what I say. As far as that goes, uh, had some left. Didn't like what was on the canvas. Came back, took this, brought it outside, and shot it just like a car with the with the with the black with the high gloss. And then uh, I wanted to give him something that would look pretty cool. Uh, so I kind of went with this, the the space theme and galaxy theme. And plus, this is about Sugar Bear, so she's not with us anymore. So it's like she's dancing on the moon waves. That's my, you know, everybody does the rainbow bridge thing and all that, man, nah, nah. Our dog was cool. She's dancing in moon waves. <laughs> so, now nah, I'm, I'm gonna do a picture of her and uh, best I can anyway. Uh, painting fur is hard. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I say. I'm gonna give it a shot and see what it comes up to be. But yeah, and then I took some spray paint. I took some white spray paint and kind of stood back and let the breeze go through and shot a couple of areas where I wanted some like galaxies or some depth and stars to be able to see in space. And then um, just basically came back with it from there. And um, the, everything, everything to this point right now, except the gray on the moon and like the outlining right now of the, the white just to make it pop. Um, Everything else has been done with spray cans and brushes. Yeah. So I'm gonna start doing the. Uh, that's usually how I kind of paint when I when I do paintings. Um, I'll figure out where I want to put my colors, and then I like paint my colors onto the actual canvas and do it that way. And I like using brushes. Um, my, my art teacher, I was, I was, I mean, the first thing I ever drew with, I think, was a pencil, you know, and then I learned how to do that, then I learned how to do shading with charcoals, and then when I got a little bit older and started getting a little bit more advanced and then going to art classes and, and doing that, um, started getting heavy in the brushes, and then my nanny, uh, who's Edna Schwess, she was Shreva, uh, if you went to, if you, if you, you, you want to my, my folks from back home watching this video, you know who I'm talking about. She was our, uh, our uh, elementary and uh, middle school uh, uh, cafeteria lady. Yeah, and that was my, that was my godmother, but uh, Edna Schwest. Um, but she started painting, and her daughter, Tina, my cousin, she paints. And I used to go over there every once in a while, and back home we call, back in Louisiana where I'm from, we call uh, uh, godmothers nannies. So that's that's what you, that, that's what you call them. So uh, when I go over to my nanny's house, uh, it was always, especially when she started doing the art, it was always about the art. It was like, it would always lead to that some kind of way. I mean, when we had the big group, like get togethers and all that kind of stuff, that was cool and that was whatever. But like if she was watching me by myself, it always went to art. It either went to art or it went to something educationally. Like I had to learn something when I was there. Or we drew stuff and painted things. And she, she's the one who kind of got me in the brushes. And the greatest thing, you know, that, you know, because she was one of the ones that kind of taught me, like, don't worry about it if you make a mistake. It's paint. Who cares? Just paint over it. And I'm like, that makes perfect sense to me. Right on. So um, that kind of just, that never left me. You know, uh, and that's pretty much what I've been doing since. So if I see it in my head, I basically try to just put it down and, and make it look like it does in my brain. That's that's pretty much all I ever do. Um, as far as like painting though, I've done all paintings. I like acrylics. I, I just, um, I like painting with acrylic paint. I, I, I don't know, I think because it's water-based and I love, I, as I said, I know it's weird. That's probably strange as I'll get out. But because it's water-based, I, I like the flow of it. I like the way it comes off of my brush. Um, oils are awesome, but they're, there's a different feel to them. And man, the people who do all paintings, 
amaze me, man. They're, they're, that's incredible. Some of the, because the, that's the that's the only drawback, uh, I guess per se, of uh, painting in acrylics. But there's there's acrylic artists that do this. You can't even tell the difference sometimes between all paintings and acrylic paintings now because they've gotten so good. The paintings gotten so good, and the artists have gotten so good. The freaking the the blending and the and just hot everything everything about it i mean but you, you know that's what's even more amazing to me because when you start looking back and you look at these old paintings that came uh you know you look at your 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 the mona lisa you know you know he's painting that with dyes and like hair and you know did, we didn't have all the synthetic stuff we have all the tools we have all the Abilities to be able to do all the the the, the, the stretched canvases and the and the, and the gesso to be able to the, the the fill in the gaps on the actual to get everything primed up ready for you to be able to paint. They didn't have any of that. They just painted, <laughs> and they did it amazingly well. And a lot of these guys, you know, you did the Vinci's and all the the greats. I mean, throughout history. Van Gogh is one of my favorite. I love Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, if you're in South Carolina, I, I think he's touring around. I, I, don't quote me, but I think they're going around to different art museums throughout the country. But the Vincent Van Gogh uh, exhibition is, is on tour right now. And if I remember what I read correctly, I think they're gonna do two of his actual paintings that's gonna be there. If you're, a, if you're in South Carolina right now though, it's gonna be in Columbia. Uh, they actually gonna do the exhibit. I, would, I'm, I definitely want to try to do that. That's gonna be super cool because uh, it just, just to be able to see a Van Gogh painting like for real in front of you. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> I get you. Yeah, dude, that's yeah, yeah, that's like that. Yeah. That's that's just uh, that's amazing to me. But uh, but they were amazing painters, and a lot of these guys they made their own tools, they made their own brushes, they made their own everything. Uh, they made their own paint sometimes. Uh, I mean, they had people that made dyes and stuff of that nature. And they can buy different colors from different people. But a lot of it as a, as a painter, you know, I would imagine back then, you either had to make it yourself or you had to go acquire the goods to be able to do it. And I think that's why a lot of the, 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 the painters back in that time period, um, if I had to bet, they probably stayed in major cities because of that fact, because they had all the trade, they had all the people there, those kind of things. But um, but yeah, that's what I say. Anyway, I go on with tangents, my bad. But anyway, with painting, with this, this is all brushwork. Um, the Posca pins, that's my, now this is, I, I 150,000% um, like this is all Drew Brophy. <laughs> Drew Brophy is an artist, uh, lives in California. He makes super sick artwork and he does stuff. It, it, it's amazing. His line work, his pen shell, every it just his paintings, his colors, his blends, his everything. Uh, he's probably one of my biggest influences as far as um, being able to, uh, to 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 put a brush down and to pick up an actual pen a paint pen and and and, and go to a canvas with it basically I mean it, uh, you know because in, the, in the, when you as a painter as a, as a per, you know using paint brushes and blending with paint brushes and different brushes and different tips and different cuts and different softnesses you got all those different things like if you we, that you have to think about whenever you're actually painting like if you're doing a gradient blend and you want one color to fade into another one very gradually and very like texturedly where, where it blends at, the, at a root level of the eye so it kind of disappears from one and becomes another one you need to have a brush with with really really good you know hair on it the the follicles on it it needs to be light it needs to be wispy the, the, you know those kind of things so when you come from that and it's like hey try painting with a paint pen and just go with it and see what happens with it and see you know how it works 
And because of Drew, Drew Brophy, that's a shout out to Drew, because of Drew, um, I met Drew doing a mural here in Myrtle Beach, uh, downtown Myrtle Beach. That was probably six, I don't even know, that's a long time. He was doing a big uh, big mural on the side of a building. Uh, it's a little cafe in downtown Myrtle Beach, uh, like right on the strip. Um, and uh, Lulu's Cafe, Misty and them. What up, Misty Trip? Um, but got to meet. I think that was. I think that's where we were. I'm almost positive. Yes, but just sat back, hung out, dude. Chill, dude. Super cool guy. Um, have a conversation with you and focus on what he's doing and and, and painting at the same time. Was that, that, just one of those kind of cats, you know? Just real, real, real good artist, real good guy. Uh, he actually the the Poshka pens. Um, they they made a kit that Drew is selling now. So if you go to drewbrophy.com, check it out. It's a starter kit to be able to paint with the Poshka pens. So it's like um, you get like Poshka pens inside of there to actually paint with. And I think there might be a couple of uh, pre-drawn uh, things to, to actually to, to paint in, in the little kit. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. Um, it might not be pre pre-drawn though. It might be like a, maybe an instructional video or something or that, that, or it might be all of it. I, I'm not real sure, but um, but yeah, super duper idea. I mean, great, that, perfect for kids. You know, uh, anything like that. This is a great transition in my mind to bringing bridging the gap for kids whenever they're coming up and, they, and they're starting to starting to paint and get into that to to hand them that. And then start handing them brushes, as you know, and, and then combining the two, and then you know, letting them take their path or do whatever they want, or be like me and be do both. Who cares, you know? Um, but yes, yeah, strong, super strong supporter uh, of Poshka pens. Drew's the one who got into it. It, it. It's literally because you're actually painting. The paint's coming out of a, of a, of a tip, uh, out of a nib. And, uh, and you, you still have to use that same kind of a form. It's not like writing with a pen per se, because you got to kind of flow with it whenever you're, uh, when you're painting with it. Um, but man, I love it. it they, they come out, it comes out good. Uh, you can get the, the larger, the larger pens or they make smaller ones where you get down. It's almost like, the almost like, uh, like a, like almost like an ink pen. Like it gets down to that and it's paint coming out of it. So you can do really fine details and little, the, that's kind of the thing that I'm getting known for for my paintings because of the little details and I put codes and stuff inside of my paintings and all kind of stuff. And um, I did one painting, it's all in braille. Uh, just things like that, as <laughs> I say, but, uh, um, but yeah, that's what I say. Um, if you get a chance though, even if you grow, I mean, it don't matter. If you get into painting or you, 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 you want to try painting, you're just doing it, just do it. Get you some Boschka bins. Go on Amazon. Do, do, go to the store. Go to Michael's. Go to, go just, who cares? Grab a couple canvases. Grab some paint pins. Grab some brushes. Grab some paint. Get you one of them little packs where you can just little starter kit things. Roll with it. See what you like. See what you want to do. You know? See how things come out. And it, it literally, literally does not matter. As long as you like it, that's the only person that has to care. So you paint whatever you want to paint. You do whichever you want to do. And, you know, just create stuff. Get rid of the anxiety. Get rid of the tension. Get rid of the, the being uptight, whatever. Whatever that is. You know, if it's surfing. If it's running, if it's whatever, man, whatever that thing is, go do it. Go do it. Don't make any excuses. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't, just go do it. Go. Because you need to. Because that's something that you want to do. Go do it. Enjoy yourself. I'm J. Paul Smith. I'll talk at you later.